other GI symptoms. Like everybody out? Like everybody out or also <laughs> nobody goes out for the next nobody three Nobody goes out. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Hit me, Producer Potts. All right, Dr. Sarah, I'm a thief. I stole this question right off your Instagram feed. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, someone asked you uh, on your Instagram, they said, how do we adjust to eating legumes more frequently without the gut fiercely retaliating? Which I loved that question, but I'm going to add to that question and ask also how often and how many servings of legumes do we actually even need to eat to get the health benefit? Like is do we need to be having legumes every day all the time to get all the benefits that you talk about? And is that maybe contributing to someone like having this kind of reaction if they're just going hog wild on the legumes now because you, you talk about legumes all the time. So there you go. <laughs> okay, so let's start with the second part of your question and then we'll kind of back up to the actual Instagram question. So uh, legumes are the most nutrient dense starchy food we can eat. So double to quadruple the nutrients per calorie of whole grains, 50% um, to about double the nutrients per calorie of most root vegetables. There's there's some overlap there. You know, if, if we were going to map them all, you would definitely see there's some root vegetables that are way up there and there's some legumes that are maybe like less exciting, but like on average, legumes are our most nutrient dense starchy foods. And the things that legumes have beyond being like some of our best, you know, sources of vitamins and minerals, really a fantastic source of folate, which is uh, one of the most common nutrient shortfalls among Americans. Also generally like really good sources of magnesium. They tend to have a good amount of um, zinc as well, manganese, copper, like they're, they're really nutrient dense, all of the B vitamins other than B12. But the things that legumes have that are probably responsible for the extensive health benefits because they're one of the most health promoting foods, they reduce risk of all cause mortality, which is a general indicator of health and longevity that we use in like scientific studies to determine whether or not something is good or bad for us overall. But the, the drops are like really impressively high for people who eat legumes regularly. So they're living longer and also living healthier. But they also, legumes are really important for reducing risk of cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, many types of cancer. So like also the cause specific issues are also reduced by diets that have legumes feature in them regularly. Um, and that those benefits are mostly attributable to two nutrients, not just the, the vitamins and minerals, but the fiber that legumes have. It just so happens to be that legumes are our most reliable concentrated source of fiber. So even more fiber per serving than root vegetables, than root um, than whole grains, root grains, uh, much more fiber than whole grains. Um, berries are, I like, uh, blackberries, raspberries. Um, so the, the berries with like lots of seeds, kind of similar chia seeds, kind of similar amount of fiber. Kumquats are really high in fiber. Um, but like all of the legumes are high in fiber. Like it, it, you don't have to like pick and choose which one, right. To get a high fiber thing to eat. So legumes, uh, have tons of fiber, which is going to segue nicely into uh, the Instagram question. And they're also really high in polyphenols. I, I think we think when we think of polyphenols, we think of vegetables and fruit and chocolate, chocolate and olive oil, um, <laughs> maybe more fun foods. Um, but legumes are some of our most concentrated sources of polyphenols as well, which have many, many health benefits because they're such great antioxidants. So, um, so legumes are are just nutrient dense, fantastic nutrients we need, and they're very like nutrient nutrient dense. So they have a lot of nutrients for the amount of calories that they contribute to the diet. So the fiber is the challenge. So it's not that it's legume fiber. Like I know we've got limericks. Like the effects of legumes are so well known that everyone knows knows like beans beans the magical fruit, right? Like. Right, right. Yeah. It's, 
Yes. Um, <laughs> that doesn't mean you're doomed to those effects when you eat legumes. Uh, but what it does mean is the challenge is if, you're, if your diet normally has, let's just say this level of fiber, whatever that is, 10 grams or 20 grams, whatever your level is, if you jump to a much higher level and just like feed your gut bacteria all of a sudden way more fiber than they're used to, that's what causes excess production of gases, which can cause bloating and gas and like discomfort and um, potentially like that increase in um, bacterial activity in the guts can also cause other GI symptoms. Like everybody out? Like everybody out or also <laughs> nobody goes out for the next nobody three Nobody goes out. Oh no. <laughs> so it, and different people, it kind of depends on the exact composition of your gut microbiome, the rest of your diet, uh, you know, like it depends on your hormone cycle, what extreme you're going to have. Um, so it, it basically not a fun <laughs> GI time is, is basically what can happen, but it's not from the legumes themselves so much as the sudden increase in fiber. So the way to get around that is to go slow. So with fiber, um, basically like the, the studies that have looked at, uh, how our, entire GI system adjusts to increases in fiber, say five gram jumps uh, per week. So um, if let's say this was the level we started at, let's say it was 10 grams of fiber per day, which is actually way below what we need. So the, the uh, daily value of fiber is 14 grams per 1000 calories. So uh, if you eat a 2000 calorie per day, day diet, that would mean 28 grams of fiber as like the target minimum. 95% gotcha. um, of Americans don't, don't get that much fiber. Like it is, it is. This is why when we do eat beans, we have yes. problems, right? It's exactly it. It's exactly it. So got it. <laughs> let's say you, you're starting at 10 grams of fiber right now. Um, so you want to go up to 15 grams for all of next week, give your GI tract an entire week to adjust to 15 grams. Oh, wow. That, by the okay. way, that five gram jump from 10 to 15 is going to be like maybe a quarter cup of legumes. Like a lot of legumes are in the like seven, eight, nine grams of fiber per half cup serving. Like, okay. Th that's, see, that's the difference, right? You go like, mm, I should eat more beans. Let me have all the bean dip or let me have all the <laughs> refried bean burritos, right? Let I'm going to go from no beans. Or I'm going to gonna take this small container of hummus and download the whole thing in one sitting with some yummy crackers or something. Yes. Yeah, yes, bad I idea. Gotcha. Yes, I and I just <laughs> ate 20 grams of fiber because I ate, you know, three <laughs> servings of. But you can work again. your way up to. Absolutely. Uh, that is what and you're then saying. The great okay, thing is when so you work up to 10 that, you don't to have the things. So go to 15 okay. all of next week. Okay. And then go up to 20 for the week after for the Got whole it. week, 20 grams each day for the whole week, and then go up to 25 for the whole week. So you're just stepping up and that might be too fast for some people. Again, it really depends on like your individual gut microbiome, the rest of your diet, your stress level, your activity level, how much you sleep. Like all of these things are influencing the composition of our gut microbiomes. So if going up by five grams is too aggressive, you can either go up by a smaller jump, go up to by two or three grams, right? Go up by half of that. Or, and potentially you do both, give your body a little bit more time to, and by body, it's really your, your gut bacteria, a little bit more time to adjust to that level. So instead of going up uh, once a week, go up once every two weeks, right? So gotcha. it's okay to, it's okay to like play around and figure out what's a good step up for you. Um, and there's some really interesting research showing that eating fermented foods can help our gut bacteria adjust to a high fiber diet uh, in a more like in a more beneficial way. So you'll get better growth of good bacteria and higher dietary diversity, which is what we want. That's one of the main benefits of a high fiber diet. So incorporating some sauerkraut or some yogurt or some kombucha, um, those types of foods can actually help us to adjust. Got to it. Fiber Hummus, intake crackers, kombucha, snack. Good. Got yes. it. <laughs> and just, just work on, work on the, don't overdo it this week or next week. Work on, work on going up.
going up slowly. Stepping up. And then you can enjoy all of those health benefits of, did I answer the part of servings? I don't know if I answered the part well, of servings. Well, no, so that's the other thing is like, so let's say for someone who maybe doesn't enjoy eating beans a lot, but they hear about you talk about, well, clearly you've just talked about why we should all be eating legumes in this yeah. video, but like how many servings do we actually need to gain the health benefits that you're talking about? Yeah. So um, studies that do kind of dose responses, like how much per month or per week or per day is optimal, you can really see this like line right around four servings per week where you're like, yeah, that's that's most of the benefits, not all of the benefits. We don't really see it level off until about one and a half servings per day. Uh, wow. And a serving is a half cup cooked for legumes. So it's, it translates to about an ounce or about a fifth of a cup of like the dried bean. So if you were cooking dried lentils or something and you wanted to just make one serving, I don't know why you would just make one serving because like leftovers are amazing, but <laughs> it would be, you would measure out an ounce or about a fifth of a cup and then add that to water and it would, would grow to about half a cup through the cooking method. So um, yeah, we don't actually see the benefits of legumes like start to actually level off until about one and a half servings per day, but four servings per week or more is absolutely a great goal. That's where you're gonna get most of the benefits. Um, so in like tips for people who don't like legumes, my favorite tip, my favorite way to increase legumes is with legume-based pasta noodles. This has become like my go-to now. So either chickpea pasta or lentil pasta. Um, there are some really affordable brands out there. So not sponsored at all, but Barilla, call me because I keep promoting your products. <laughs> and I will keep promoting your products even more if you sponsor me. Um, but I love the Barilla. They have um, a chickpea pasta that's really fantastic. Um, and they also have a red lentil pasta that's really fantastic. They're gluten-free, which is important in our household. It may or may not be important in your household. Um, but they're like the boxes are maybe 20 cents more per box than the regular pasta. So much more um, accessible than some of the other more like niche options of legume-based pasta. And for that 20 cents, you are getting so much protein, so much fiber compared to regular pasta. And I I think they're delicious. Like I think they they totally hit that like comfort food button for That's me. That's a great, great swap. Talk uh, about absolutely. making things easy. Yeah, yeah. I love and, that. And um, for me, it's also permission to, for that extra maybe 20 cents that I put into the pasta, I can save money by not putting as much like meat into the sauce because um, I've got all that protein from the, from the lentils. So, that's the other thing is it's it's so flexible and versatile and affordable. And I, I can find them at my local Kroger and my local Walmart. So also like hopefully pretty easy to find or you can order them from Amazon. So that's my, my tip. And also my pleading to Barilla for sponsorship. <laughs> So can you, I, I love these tips that you're giving. I think they're really helpful for people. Is there a place where someone could go to kind of get more of these like basic tips or like maybe just some basic how-to recipes in the kitchen, like just starting out? Like, is there a place that you have that somewhere can go for, cause I love, I love this. This is so great. I have, I have two suggestions. So in terms of just like making nutrient density really easy, that was one of the main goals of my book, Nutrivore, available uh, now from all major online booksellers and many independent bookstores, and it might be at your local library. So this is very much about like why to care about nutrients um, and how nu getting more nutrients can improve my life uh, specifically as, as the reader, but then also just tons of like these types of accessibility tips of how to implement a more nutrient dense diet, including like everything we talked about about fiber is in here. Those breakdowns of how many servings of legumes is in here. So even like that type of, you know, uh, important conversations about accessibility of increasing nutrient intake and like why we might not want to go from zero to 100.6 seconds when it comes to fiber. So I would definitely recommend my book and there's 12 mix and match style recipes in chapter 12. I just realized there were 12 recipes in chapter 12. 
but there's also 15 snack recipes. So actually there's 27 recipes. So I, all right. my, my fun little <laughs> like echoing of numbers uh, just, just got ruined. Um, but what's really cool about those recipes is they're all pretty, like they're all accessible. None of them have any like complicated hit cooking techniques. And they all have like um, a couple of lists of like, choose one or two from this list and choose one from this list and maybe choose two or three from this list. So you can cater to the foods you like. You can just like use what you happen to have in your home already, or you can use those lists to like intentionally mix it up and like increase dietary diversity. And they're all like really accessible recipes. So I would say the book is a great resource, but also I have tons of recipes on my website um, for, for free. So come over to Nutribor.com. There's so many recipes there. I'm adding recipes all the time and you can sort by like different dietary needs by different like types of recipe. Um, so that is also a great place to, to come and find recipes for, especially recipes for legumes to, uh, make them hopefully a really like delicious and enjoyable part of your routine and not just a, I don't know what's going to happen on the toilet tomorrow part of your routine. <laughs> I love that. I have one more quick question. If someone wants to ask a question for you to answer here on YouTube, how do they do that? Where do they go to do that? Yeah. So you can just uh, put put your question below, like just, just comment it on this video. Um, I, my team and I look at all of those comments um, and if it's a really simple question, we might just answer it too um, in, in the comments, but uh, go ahead and leave your comment below. Priority, however, for questions getting answered here goes to Patreon Super Nerds and Pro Tier. So they have a suggestion box where they get to ask questions. They get their own uh, Q&A videos in there every single month. And uh, those are like top priority questions for, for answering here as well. Awesome. Thanks so much, Dr. Sarah. Thank you.